Ezekiel chapter 11, verses 17 through 21. Verse number 17 says, Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people, assemble you out of the countries where you have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. And they shall come thither, and they shall take away all the detestable things, detestable things, excuse me, thereof, and all the abominations thereof from thence. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and will give them a heart of flesh, right. that they may walk in my statues and keep my ordinances and do them. They shall be my people and I will be their God. But as for them, whose heart walketh after the heart of their detestable things and their abominations, I will recompense their way upon their own heads, saith the Lord God. For just a few moments today, I want to try to preach to every living soul in this sanctuary, on this subject. The need of the hour. The need of the hour. This need is not just for us. But it's for every apostolic church in America. Amen. It is the need of the hour. And that need of the hour is... Conversion of God's people. All right. We need that new heart. Amen. We need the stony heart removed and a heart of flesh put back in. Amen. We need to be filled again with the Holy Ghost. Yes, Amen. All through the book of Acts after the day of Pentecost, you read it, before God began to do great things, the Holy Ghost would come upon them. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. It doesn't mean that they were born again, again, again. Right. But they were converted again. Amen. They renewed it again. Amen. They turned back again. This church and every church in America and across the world needs this conversion. Amen. Hallelujah. We are so caught up with our thoughts and our anxieties and our fears and, and our particular calamity of what takes place in our life that we have forgotten who gives life. That's right. Amen. We have forgotten where we came from to where God brought us. Amen. When is the last time some of you spoke in tongues? Come on, preach. When is the last time any of you had rent your garments spiritually and cried out to God, God, give me that heart I had when I was first born again. Let me know you, God, like I knew you when I came out of the water. Amen. There's not a one of us here. Not a one of us. That if you would somehow chip away the hardness and stubbornness and stiff neckness of our carnality, would not admit I'm not as close to God right. as I was a year ago. All right. Amen. Amen. I'm not as close to God as I was two years ago. God didn't move. God didn't run away. That's right. God didn't push you away. Right. We got so caught up with the things of life that we forgot that this is our life. Amen. 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 Let me, if I could, give you a biblical example. I'm sure you've heard of Peter. We're a lot like Peter. We say a lot of things 
And at times we do very little. But you know, Peter, I'm going to tell you what. He had some of us beat when it came to church faithfulness. Yes, sir. For over three years, he never missed a service. Amen. <laughs> it didn't matter how far they had to walk. Right. It didn't matter if they did without food. It didn't matter if they prayed all night. Right, Lord. Amen. It didn't matter if there was a storm in the midst of the sea before they got to the other side. Right. <laughs> it didn't matter if they came out, the Pharisees, the religious world, and began to persecute them and began to attack them. Uh, it didn't matter where church was at, what time of day it was at. It didn't matter how hot it was, how dry it was, how cold it was. It didn't matter if it was raining. Amen. Wherever they had church. Now, you've got to understand, they were with church. Come on now. Amen. Jesus is the church. Yes. So wherever Jesus went, they were having church. They had church seven days a week. Yes. I never heard them say, Jesus, I need to leave you for a little bit because I've got too much church going on. I want to go back and visit this one or do that or go this. And, and, and I'm trying to be careful. But why be careful? Let's just spell it out. I want to go do what I want to do, Jesus, for a little while. So, I, hey, just give me a tenor area and a schedule where you're going to be next week so I can catch up with you. Come on, that's good. There was only one person that left them for a moment. There was only one person that allowed Jesus to get that far away from them. And He betrayed them. So, is that what's happening to us? Have we walked away just a little bit and we made counsels uh, and we've talked and, and we've made our plans and, and we've uh, figured everything out and, and, and we think we know this and we know that and, and Jesus all the while still having church. Amen. Jesus was still having church while Judas was in the Sanhedrin. He was still having church, washing their feet, drying that. He was still singing hymns at the garden. He was still praying uh, with his inner circle at the garden while Judas was apart. While Judas was saying, Lord, I just can't go to church today. I, I just can't make it today. Oh my God, I've got some other things i got to do. There's 30 pieces of silver waiting for me. I I I've got to get that. Come on now. Uh, hallelujah. Glory to God. You know what happened to him? He hung himself. I'd rather be a Peter that would deny him and go out and be converted yeah. than to hang myself. Can I tell you a little bit more about Peter? There is no service that you've ever been in that wasn't as powerful as Peter's services. Amen. I mean, he's the only human being alive that I know of that walked on water. Amen. Amen. He was at church that day, Frank. Yeah. <laughs> the Lord said, come. He didn't stay in his pew. That's right. Come on now. Frank, come on. You know, he didn't say, oh, I'm good. <laughs> you know, I don't need any more Holy Ghost. Talk about it. Amen. No, 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 I don't need the altar today. Amen. No, Pastor, you ain't preaching to me today. No, the Lord said, hey, it's me, Peter. Right. Well, if it is you, then bid me to come. He said, come on and come. Peter just left the others behind. <laughs> Bring me what you got. Hallelujah. Yes. He was there, you know. Yes. 
on that mountain overlooking the Sea of God. He was Amen. there. Yes, and all of a sudden, the Lord began to bless the food. And the next day, you know it? Wow, there was basket after basket after basket yes. after basket. Amen. And then He said, hey, take this and go feed the people. Right. And, and so the apostles went out and they fed the people. And guess what? Each of those twelve had a basket left over. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I wonder how many blind they saw see, how many deaf they saw hear, how many devils they saw cast out, how many lame they saw walk. I wonder how many sermons they heard from the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm sure He preached more than what is written in the book. Oh yeah. yeah. Because if you'll read it, if you'll read it, you'll find that the Apostle John said if the works of Him that was done... The very world could not contain the books that right. would have been written. Amen. So Amen. we haven't read it all, honey. All right. We haven't. Amen. But they saw it all. They experienced it every day. They had church every day. Peter was right there. He was there, Brother Jeremy, when they looked astonished at the Master talking to a Samaritan woman who the Jews yes. could not have any dealings with. They were there saying, what is he doing? Yes. All the while the Lord was saying, oh, you need to be converted. Amen. You got so much church. Mm -hmm. Amen. You, you got so much ritual in you. You... You've seen it so much that you are getting weary of it. It does not mean anything to you anymore, Peter. You're just getting so accustomed to me. Spitting in the ground and making a little right. mixture. Telling somebody to go wash in the pool of Siloam when they come back see. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Apostolics, we're taking church for granted because we can miss without even thinking about it. That's true. You don't even bother us if we don't go to a prayer service. Peter experienced all this. I mean, do you understand what I mean by experiencing? He saw Jesus Christ in the flesh. Do you know he was in the room when they uncovered the roof? Mm -hmm. And they lower yeah. the man sick of the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Do you understand what kind of church I'm talking about? Amen. <coughs> and the Lord just say, take up thy bed and walk. Can you imagine what Peter saw? Can you imagine what he experienced? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine the fellowship he had with the Lord? Amen. Sitting down somewhere on a hillside, eating figs, Eating olives, breaking bread. Do you understand how close he was to the Lord? Do you really understand how close he was? I mean, he was there. And he watched Jesus. Amen. He was there as he entered into the temple. And they'd never seen their Lord like this before. They'd always seen him being meek and compassionate to the poor. They'd never seen him this way. He walked into that temple and immediately he began to raise his voice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It has been said that my house shall be a house of prayer, but you made it again of thee. He began to overturn the table. Why? He was saying, You need to conversion. Amen. You people in the temple. You need to be converted. You made my house a guarantee. You made my house a house of hypocrites. That's not all he did as Peter was watching. Wow. This man, he, he, he's all man. He got a whip. Now, he didn't hit nobody. But I'm sure when he started doing that, there must have been some fire going. Because he drove them out of the temple. He had the right. It was his temple. That's right. They were supposed to be there for him, but they didn't receive him. He came unto his own. You know, it's just like a Sunday morning. 11 o'clock. You know, we begin to come into this temple. 
we begin to worship him and he comes to his own. Yes. Come on. Amen. They would not receive him. But whoever received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even Amen. to them that believe on his name. Where are you at with your walk with God? It's very painful for a pastor to see people going through things. For his family to experience people rejecting the word of God. Right. Rejecting to do right. All they need to be is converted. Right. Amen. Amen. And to see God because of their stone heart. Begin to open an avenue and give them release to go wherever they go. But God has a purpose. And He wants every empty spot in here to be filled with people that wants to be converted. Amen. Amen. Let me break it down for you in the book of Luke as we bring it up. I'll set all of that to get to this scripture. I remember what I told you. Peter was in all these church services. Every one of them. He saw these miracles. He heard the teaching. He compounded them. No man ever spake like this. He saw the hungry fed. He saw the devils fall at the master's feet. He ate with Jesus. He slept in the same area that he slept. He was even there when Jesus came into his mother-in-law's house in Capernaum. When she was laid sick of the fever and the Lord touched her brow. And immediately the fever left her and she got up. And minister to their needs. Amen. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. I hope you do. Because I'm not sugarcoating. Amen. Amen. We come in, we take all of this for granted sometimes. It may not be our intention. It may have not been on purpose. But because of things in our life, things that we didn't like, didn't agree with, whatever the case may be. We've allowed other things to compromise our walk with God. And all God is saying is the same thing He said to Peter. Peter who's a rock. Peter who He gave the keys to. Peter who He changed the name from Simon to Peter. Peter who was so bold that He went around rebuking the Lord in front of everybody. Not so, Lord. Then the Lord even called him in front of everybody. Satan, get thee behind me. Amen. But he still went to church. Amen. All right. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh! Amen. He still went to church. Right. He didn't take a sabbatical. Mm -hmm. right. And then the Lord says this to a church girl. Can you believe the Lord doing this? He said this to a church goer, a person that had been with him for three years. There, every day. Helping him, watching him. Whatever you need, Jesus. Whatever you need me to do, Jesus. He even tried to keep the crowd away. He even rebuked the children, and Jesus said, Some of your children are coming to me. Amen. For such is the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. And all of this, the church goer. The Jew, the born again believer, if I could say it that way. Amen. You would think after three years being in church that no one would tell you you need to be converted. Come on now. I mean, you know, some of you are thinking, Pastor, you lost your mind. I've been baptized. I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah, but how full are you now? All right. That's right, sir. That's right. Amen. Where's the measure of the Holy Ghost now? Amen. How much control does your carnality have in your life? That should tell you. Come on now. How much do you convince yourself to do what you know? The scripture says you ought not to do. Right. Right. That'll tell you how full you are of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I don't know about you. I don't know where you're at. I don't know what's going to happen. I've told you this many times. But for me, I'm going to do whatever God 
tells me to do so I can see what he has promised. Because if you haven't noticed, our services are changing. The depth of our services and the preaching is changing. We've had some fantastic services. Wave after wave after wave after wave of the whole Thursday night message. If it could a mention that I didn't believe it was going to go to. But I'm telling you, honey, you and I today need to make up our minds. Either we're going to be converted or we need to go somewhere. Everybody in the church lifts their hands. All right. All right. All right. 
those that are way too far gone. And everybody begins maybe to sing a little bit and feel the beat a little bit. You are and everybody, you know what I'm saying? You know, come on, let's be let's just get right down to it. You know, we know how to go through the motions. You know what I'm saying? We know how to go through the motions. Oh Lord, everybody's raising that. Everybody's trying to tell. Everybody's singing, Lord. But you don't understand, Pastor. Somebody in this sanctuary touch me. Hallelujah. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be you? Is it going to be you? desire to have you that he may sift you as wheat but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not you see when you hesitate to come and repent when you know you know you're not what you need to be and you allow fear and anxiety and stubbornness to keep you from coming and repenting what will somebody else say I'll have to you know let down what I think I'm justified in Hello? Yes. It doesn't matter where you turn away from me or not. I'm preaching it. Amen. It doesn't matter where you turn your eyes away from me or not, or you're hoping I'm going to be through. I ain't through yet. Because I am looking for a church in the church. I am looking for people that want God. I am looking for people that will try again. I'm looking for people that will go again. I'm looking for people that will return again. I'm looking for people when they get themselves in trouble, and we will. When they fail, and we will. They'll just get right up and say, today I'm going to be concerned. Today I'm going to have a good person. Today I'm going to touch him again. Too complacent, too lethargic, 
too cold hearted. Right. Our thinking has become too carnal. Yes. Our emotions are just they're going round. Yes. Yes. God, I'm telling you, listen to your pastor again. And don't you be dismayed when people, and there have been some, when they begin to ease out, don't even just pray for them and go on. Don't even, you know, concern yourself about you. Right. That's right. I promise you this, where I'm fixing to go, God is going to do this. You can write it down. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And now I convert and strengthen thy brethren. I want to go to another scripture. Let's pull it up real quickly so I can try to close. My daughter come up and get herself ready. Now this is the Apostle Paul going to the Jews, going to the church like I am today. Uh -huh. okay. I mean, I can put myself in his shoes, right? Amen. I, I'm coming to the church. I, I'm coming to the seed of Abraham. I'm coming to, yes. to Israel today. Amen. And I'm preaching something that our flesh abrasive. Yes. Our soul says, get it. Yes. Amen. I know you're right. I know I've become cold. All right. Indifferent. I know it's been a long time since I've really spoken in tongues or read the Word of God or, or prayed. Maybe, maybe I hadn't even given my tithe in years. <laughs> Hello? And he was going. Say, go unto this people and say, Hearing ye shall hear. Oh, you shall hear. And shall not understand. But you don't understand. And seeing ye shall see. You are seeing. And not perceive. But you don't perceive. Let's stand today. For the heart of this people is wax gross. Come on. And their ears are dull of hearing. Come on. And their eyes have they closed. Right. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and should be converted. What? And should be converted. So you can't be healed of the things that you're struggling with until you are converted. You can't get over the pain. You cannot get over those that may have done you wrong. Whether they did or didn't, it's irrelevant. Get over it. Yes. Get converted. Yes. Why? Because there's healing in it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Sunday night. Sunday night. If I'm not mistaken. I know people can't stay all the time, so don't. But we waited on the Lord. You remember those that were able to wait? Yeah. The Lord just moved. And the Lord moved. And the Lord moved. I came over here and sit in this chair right here. And all of a sudden, the Lord sent another way. And I began to weep. And I began to cry. And the Lord began to speak to me these words. Forgive those that have persecuted you. Despitefully used and really Pray for you. I begin to weep and I begin to say yes Lord convert me <laughs> and I begin to pray and that day before I got home a situation in our life that has hurt us deeply I text the individual and I put in that text. Your vow is forgiven. And any transgressions you may have done is also forgiven. All right. Preacher say, say a preacher. You can harbor whatever you want to harbor. You can be as tough as you want to be now. And I promise you, when you stand before Him, His service is going to come back. When you had a chance to at least try, you go to the altar and kneel before the Lord and say, God, I know I do not what I need. 
not what I should be. I'm not what I once was. God, give me a conversion today. Reignite that fire. Flame that love. And I should heal them. And it continues to read. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles. They will hear. Let me tell you, sweet pea, I love you with all of my heart. But this city is full of so many thousands of souls. If you resist being converted, God will bring in someone else to be converted. God's going to have a church. He is going to have a church. So what will you do today? Will you turn a deaf ear from God? Will you see all that God has done in your life and have the stubbornness to go out of this place without at least attempting to be converted? Amen. I, what arrogance. Will you forgive those that hurt you and done wrong to you? Will you pray for the enemies that because of your walk with God you have obtained? I love you, but I am so determined. You'll read the book of Ezekiel. He gives preachers fire and they preach. And they do not fear the people's faces. They may love them and their heart may be breaking, but I cannot, will not fear to preach what God has laid on my heart because your soul is at stake. God has made this church a promise. And by the grace of God, I pray He lets me live long enough to see it. But whether I live long enough to see it or not, if He tarries, it will happen. It will happen. What will you do today? Will you be converted? Will you return? Maybe you haven't been baptized in Jesus' name. The water is ready. Maybe you don't have the Holy Ghost. You've never had the Holy Ghost. Come and let somebody pray for you that you might receive it. But don't hesitate. Today is a day of salvation. We harden not our heart in the day of provocation. You need to come. One step is the hardest. After that, it's easy. Amen. The first step out is the toughest. But after that, it gets easy, honey. After that, you'll be going, oh, I'm glad I made this. Oh, I'm getting closer. Oh, I'm feeling the love of God. Oh, I'm feeling the mercy of God. Oh, I'm going to be converted. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to return it again. I'm going to try it again. I'm going to call him again. Amen. God is working with this local assembly. Be not dismayed, neither fear. No matter what you see, you trust in God. Because God has built this house. And God will keep 